Well, welcome to the uh, general store. Now, I like to interpret this building in the golden age of the general store, which for me would have been about 1850. Now, the interesting thing about the general store is that you can actually map the course of the Industrial Revolution in the rise of the general store, uh, and also the Erie Canal, because the Erie Canal actually played a large development in founding the general stores as we think of them today. And general stores were pretty much general where you could buy just about anything and if you couldn't they would order it for you. Now in the early days that might take several weeks by the Erie Canal but by the coming of the railroad by 1850 or so uh, that would time would be considerably less. buy things that were made in factories. Factories were all new at this time, you know. Factories were basically unheard of uh, before 1800 or so. But thanks to Great Britain and the steam engine made factories possible where they could mass produce things like soap. Small country uh, village like this with this general store also used a lot of local a lot of the local uh, products as well. Uh, we have an interesting selection of stoneware pottery here, which would have been made by a local uh, potter uh, for shipping various items. And, uh, pottery very popular for shipping items, say, on the Erie Canal or by ship. Also, broom making that would have been done by a local person as well. Now, further down the aisle here, we have some interesting things on the counter here. Here is a fly trap. It's a bottle, but a bottle with a hole in it. See there? And uh, they would actually bait the inside of this with honey, and the, the flies or bees would fly up inside there. And as I said earlier, they would buzz around and buzz around, but couldn't fly directly down. So they would eventually tire and die. And there's actually like a lip inside there to catch catch the dead flies. And there's actually a, like a portrait of a fly or a bee on there. Now you could also buy medicine at the general store. And uh, they actually have what was known as patent medicine back in the 19th century. And, uh, this is pure castor oil. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the ingredients were inside castor oil. In fact, oftentimes they were kept secret. Now, back in those days, you did not have to put the ingredients on the label. In fact, you could put just about anything you wanted to into a bottle of medicine. You could make it in your bathtub at home if you wanted to and, and uh, bottle it and sell it right on the street. Uh, no one would say nay to that. And, uh, castor oil was one of the more popular medications, but a lot of these medicines actually had things that were harmful to your health. They, they contain large amounts of alcohol. Uh, some had cocaine in them and it, it, opium derivatives and things like that. Uh, laudum was another one. So, uh, yeah, they eventually passed a law that did away with patent medicine. This is uh, a shield. It's a sugar cone. Uh, sugar often came in a cone like this. Now, if you didn't want the entire cone, the shopkeeper often had like a drill where he would drill down into the sugar and break it up into cubes. So it's a section that you could take home with you. Of course, back in those days, expected to bring your own bags to the general store. They didn't have the bags there. You were expected to bring your own bags and uh, the shopkeeper would place the item whatever you chose in those bags. Things were pre-packaged like they are today. So if you wanted a pound of coffee or a pound of this or a pound of that, shopkeeper had to weigh it out. And this is how they would do it. See, this is a sack of flour. Put the flour here on there. And then we'll wait. This is a two pound, two pound wheat. We can deduce this, this does not weigh two pounds. So we take that off and we'll try something a little lighter. Ah, okay. 
This weighs less than two pounds, but more than one. It's still in the air. So what we'll do is we'll take some of these, these ounces. These represent ounces. This represents eight ounces. We'll put eight ounces here. Oops, nope. Doesn't weigh one pound, eight ounces. So let's try two ounces. One pound, two ounces. Nope, that's heavier than that. We only have one weight left, so we better try that. Four ounces. One pound, four ounces. Don't breathe. Yes, I do believe that is about right. So we would charge you for one pound, four ounces of flour. One of the general stories uh, actually did double duty as post offices. Because it was a gathering area to, to begin with, so it made sense that the, the post offices would also be included in, inside the general store. These are called pigeonholes here. And this is where people came to collect their mail. Of course, back in those days, they, they, they didn't have door-to-door -door mail delivery. So you would come here to collect any mail you might receive. And you had to pay for the mail when you received it, not when you sent it. So you were expected to pay for it here. Now this side, we have rolls of cloth. Now you have to remember, back in the pioneer days, they would not have had all this array of fabrics to choose from. People still made their own clothes, but they would come in here to choose fabric that what they would do is they, they would choose a bolt, what they call the bolt of fabric, and they would ask the shopkeeper to remove so many yards, and they had a special pair of scissors known as shears, and the shears were used to cut off so many yards or so many feet of cloth. How did the shopkeeper keep track of everything that was bought and sold? Well, they had a book book called a ledger. And each one of these pages was dedicated to an individual customer. They knew each individual customer that came into the store and they would simply turn to that page and the page that had that customer name on it, uh, they would write down what, what was bought and sold. They didn't have credit cards as we think of it back in those days, but they did extend credit to customers they could trust, but they kept track of the money that was owed by writing it in red in these columns here. That's the folks from Hosmer, they have a page. They're the MacArthur folks. Wow, that's a, it looks like 11 dollar eggs, that's how well they Joe's Farm, they have a page, and they bought his sausage stuffer, and they also bought a toothbrush. We have a toothbrush where the bristles were actually made from the bristles of a pig. 